everyone. Welcome to STEM Class Remote. So today we're going to go through and learn how to use Screencastify. So for those who do not know what Screencastify is, it is the app I'm actually using right now. It's a Google extension. It's what I'm using to record my voice and my Google browser here. So I've been using this a lot since uh, the spring when we had to first go remote. So anyways, it's a Chrome extension. So we're going to have to download just like the Bitmoji. But I had already checked with another student to verify that we were able to download it. So you guys should be able to. My good student, Dariel, was able to download it onto his Chromebook. So if he can do it, I'm sure you guys can do it. So I'm just going to type in Screencastify extension. All right, it's going to be on the Chrome store, just like the other one. And same as before, going to add to Chrome. Obviously, for me, it says remove from Chrome, but that's because I already have it. All right, so once you add it, it'll be right up here. Screencastify screen video recorder. All right. So there's a couple more things to this. I'll go ahead and show you after this uh, little Screencastify I'm doing right now. But you can go ahead and click here. And you can go to My Recordings. So these are all the recordings I've done so far. So they keep a library and it saves all to your Google um, your Google Drive. All right, you can delete. You can open them in Drive. All right, click on the options. You can also edit the videos too. You can submit them. You can go to. You can put them straight to the um, classroom resources if you want to learn more about Screencastify. But uh. I'll be showing you guys in a quick second the other options you can do with Screencastify, okay? Hey Gators, so I'm back on for Screencastify here. So unfortunately when I was doing my own Screencastify for this video, I couldn't do this part because it was recording. But anyway, so when you first open Screencastify, this, well, let's see if I can do this half, perfect. This will come up, okay? So there's three different options you can choose from. There's the browser tab, so that'll just only show your Google browser, whatever you're on. Then there's the, oh, there it is, the uh, desktop. That'll show your entire desktop. And then there is, on this far end, is the webcam, okay? So for these first two, the browser and the desktop, you can, it'll screen record your whole browser and or your desktop. And you can also have your own video feed going on it, okay? So it'll have like a little square, like I know you guys watch like your YouTube streamers or whatever. They'll have like a little screen on the bottom corner of them. That'd be how you do it, okay? The webcam version will only record from your camera. So if you want to do the exercise videos, you can do it from that option, okay? And when it saves, it'll save automatically onto your Google Drive. All right, guys, hope that helps. I want to see some cool videos from you guys. Because there's also the editor tool, so you can go edit, make it how, look how you want it, okay? Hi Gators, I hope your portion controls are going good. Remember to keep logging into your food log, the food you eat and how much of it you eat, and then add up the calories. You can always find them if you Google it, or on the label of the box, okay? Today I'm going to make you a healthy breakfast. Eggs, in general, have about 70 calories a piece, so they're a very good source of protein. So I'm going to show you how to make an egg omelet, which you can have for breakfast or you can have for a snack, all right? You can have it any time because they're really good. So, have you ever cracked an egg? Crack on the edge of a bowl, then you put your fingers in the middle, you gently pull it open, and hopefully, you don't get any shell in it, okay? If you do, you can just try to pick it out with a fork. You have to be very patient when you crack an egg, right? Don't just smash it, because then you're gonna get shells in it. I'm using two eggs. Okay. Now you can take a fork and you're just going to whisk them. And 
And then you can also add a little bit of milk, just a tiny bit, or you could do it without milk. But I find it gives it a little more creaminess if you're adding it. Just keep mixing it up. Okay, put that aside. This is your pan, or you can have a pan around this size. Something that you can set on top of a stove. And I'm using this to spray so it doesn't stick. You could also use butter. So I'm spraying the inside so it doesn't stick. Now this is not a stove, I'm just showing you what I'm putting in the pan. So this is the omelet. Okay. In the pan. And then I'm gonna take some peppers, because you can add whatever you want to it. These are just some cut up green and red peppers that I had in the fridge. And you can also add some cheese. Now the thing about an omelet is you fold it a certain way when you're cooking it, but if for some reason it gets messed up, you can just scramble it. So it still tastes good and it's still an egg. So I have peppers, cheese, you could put um, any type of like mushrooms. If you have spinach, you can put it in there, make it nice and big. And a lot of people like cheese in it. I'm gonna put a little bit more peppers. Okay. So now, this is what it looks like uncooked. Kind of like a bunch of ook, right? <laughs> so now I'm gonna cook it on the stove. Do not use the stove unless you have permission. I'm gonna move it over here. Okay, so now it's on the stove. And I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for it to start getting brown around the edges. Put it on low heat, because if you put it on high heat, it's gonna burn. Okay, I'll be back when it's when it's done because I think I'm going to drop my phone in the egg if I don't stop recording. <laughs> All right. See how it's see how it's cooking on the edges. Okay, in the pan. So basically, I would just lift this side up and I'm going to fold it in half. Okay, and I'll show you what it's like after it's folded. But you don't want to do it too soon, otherwise it'll fall apart. If it does fall apart, you can still eat it because it's just eggs and vegetables, so it would be like scrambled eggs. Okay, I'm back. See how it's folded in half and it's brown? I'm still letting it cook in, the, in between a little bit, and I will definitely flip it one more time. And the, the stove is on low heat. Again, I don't want you using the stove unless you have permission. Okay, so here it is. It is a little bit broken, but that's okay. It's a hearty meal. Okay, I'm back. So this is what it looks like done, finished product, right? Some people have toast with it. Some people eat it just as is. Um, like I said, it's a plenty for you to get through to lunch or as a snack, very healthy as a snack. Two eggs, 70 calories, so you got like 140. The cheese is a little bit, but I didn't put that much in it. Maybe a quarter cup and then some chopped up red peppers and green peppers. Um, also, you can make this in the morning, maybe if you don't have time before your morning meeting, because I know some of you are like half asleep during the morning meeting. Between your morning meeting and your next class, you have like 15 minutes. So if you feel like you need something to eat or you haven't eaten and you're hungry, you can make it then, or you can make it between some of your other classes because we're fine as, as long as you're in class doing your work. And if you're eating it on class, well, so what, right? You're hungry. So anyway, 
enjoy and I want to hear if you guys made an omelet. Good luck with your food journals. Hi everybody, welcome back. I enjoyed seeing all of your Flipgrids. Those were great. All right, your characters are really starting to come to life. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna literally bring those characters to life and draw them out. We're gonna use a program on Nearpod called Draw It. So you're gonna be able to take what you've done in your character description and start adding some details. For example, my character Hansel was an old man, right? So you'll see when I draw on my Nearpod in the next video, that I added a cane, I added some glasses, and you will also see how terrible of an artist I am. But that's okay, I tried my best. But what I also did was I put a text box in the side of the screen to say in words what I wanted my character to be. That way in my head, when I start to act as this character, I know that I'm gonna be moving very slow. Okay, maybe I'll find some glasses to put on. Maybe I'll find a gray wig to wear. All right, so there are things that I'm gonna do with this character that are gonna bring it to life in the future. All right, so for today's assignment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build off of our Starry Night character. So we're gonna go into our Google Classroom. We're gonna go to Classwork, okay? We're gonna go over to Classwork and then in today's activity, you're gonna see Enrichment TV, which isn't posted yet, but then you're also gonna see a Nearpod Starry Night character. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna take us to a Nearpod lesson, okay? When you get to your lesson, you put in your first and last name. That's really important. And I would also like you to put in your grade, okay? The same thing we do on Zoom, okay? You can put your grade first if you want, that's fine. I need your grade somewhere and then your first and last name. If you don't put in your first and last name, I don't know who's doing the work and I can't give you credit, okay? So grade, first, and last name. Join lesson. And this is our introduction slide. You're gonna draw your character for Starry Night, okay? On Nearpod, these blue buttons over here on each side are how you go forward and backwards. So I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna go to the next slide. This is going to be our blank draw it page. So I'm able to draw my character. This is a character that I started earlier. And here I'm gonna to go to the erase tool. I'm gonna to erase my character, okay? So that way I can just keep drawing it. I'm only gonna erase part of it because I'm gonna continue this drawing, okay? So I can use all of these different tools. I have a pen and I can pick my color. I have a marker where I can pick my color, okay? I could insert a picture. So if I have my, the sketch of my Starry Night and I took a picture to put on Google Classroom, I could actually upload it here. I could go to Browse My Files and I could find my picture. And I can add that image, okay? And then I could draw right on that image. I can manipulate it. I can move it around the page, okay? Um, but I'm gonna continue drawing. Or I can add a text box, I'm sorry. So here, I can also add a text box and again, if I grab it by the four corners, I can move that around. And if I'm really not a good artist, which Lord knows I'm not, I could actually start typing in here the description. My character Ansel is old, has a cane, and wears thick glasses, right? So and I would add more detail too, but I'm just giving you a quick tutorial. So now I have a, a written description and now I wanna keep drawing. So I'm gonna keep drawing. I started here, okay, I'm gonna finish the body, come around. Again, I'm not an artist like Miss Bloomer, but that's okay. We're going to just do our best. Then I'm going to add the cane, like I said. Right, he has a cane. I'm going to make my cane come down here. I'm going to make it one of those, like, three-prong canes because... All right. Um, I also said he had thick glasses, right? And I want to make those a little bit thinner. So here, I'm gonna draw the glasses. 
I'm gonna hook him around. All right. And you know what? He probably has some pretty gray hair. Oh, I can't do the gray. That's okay. All right. So basically, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be drawing your own character in the Nearpod Draw It. I can't wait to see them. Hi guys, it's Mrs. Bloomer. Today we're going to continue looking at the work of Salvador Dali and we're going to make some artwork in his style. So if you take a look at this picture of Salvador Dali, you see that he had kind of a unique style of his own. Did you check out that mustache? That was his real mustache. So he definitely had a unique look and his artwork had a very unique look. We're gonna take a look at one of his most famous paintings that I showed you before. This one's in color. So you can take a peek at it. And remember we talked about those melting clocks. So this famous painting is called The Persistence of Memory. And he shows these melting clocks. And it's funny that I had read something about Salvador Dali that said that his inspiration for those melting clocks was actually a piece of melting cheese. And he was really studying some melting cheese, I guess. And he must have had a clock nearby. And he thought, ooh, I'll make these melting clocks that look like that piece of cheese. So it's interesting how artists are inspired and how they come up with their ideas. So you'll also notice in this famous painting that in the background, if you notice these way back here, there's sort of like a somewhat realistic looking landscape with those rocks and maybe some an interesting looking sky that looks so, sort of realistic. But then up front we have this weird like melting clocks hanging from a tree and melting over some sort of structure. And then there's this odd looking shape here that almost looks like a face. It looks like kind of an eye a closed eye with some eyelashes and a nose or like a really big nose. And then there's another melting clock draped over that object. All right, so the first assignment I had asked you guys to draw something that looked like it was melting. You could have done a clock. That's what I chose to do. Or you could have chosen something else. And I think I showed you these the other day, yes? So we have the melting Rubik's cube, which looks pretty neat and that melting apple. So you can kind of see the details there, right? Down here that show that it's melting. It looks like it's melting. So you could really take any object that you want to and add some of these curvy lines at the bottom of whatever your object is to kind of, you know, make it look like it's melting there. Look at that melting apple, strange. So I hope you guys already made a picture of something that looks like it's melting. What I'd like you to do as a next step is create a picture somewhat like this persistence of memory that Salvador Dali painted. I want you to create a drawing that shows some dreamlike images and you can stick your melting object into it. Okay, so remember the style of the surrealist artists, they, they usually combined images or combined things that you wouldn't normally see being combined. The trombone and the elephant's body, strange, dreamlike. It's like maybe the artist Salvador Dali made this one. Maybe he had a dream about this and then he woke up and wrote it all down and started making sketches for it. Pretty neat. Then there's this other one that I like, that ship. And instead of sails that they would have here, the butterflies are there. That's pretty neat. So again, dreamlike. Well, I made my own sketch with my inspiration coming from Salvador Dali and the surrealism style art that he did. And here it is. It's a little strange. I don't know if you notice my octopus cat. And I have my melting clock in there too. I don't know. It's kind of kind of dreamlike, I think. So I'd like you guys to go ahead and make a dream style picture. Make it look surrealistic. 
and you should have at least one melting object in there. Okay, and then you're just going to add something strange that a little, little unrealistic or dreamlike. Okay, all right. I look forward to seeing your artwork. It's okay to get a little strange with these drawings, just like surrealist artists do. Good luck. Bye, Salvador. Hey guys, welcome back to Virtual PE. I'm Miss Reedy. I'm Miss Dimeen. All right. Some of you might be sore after yesterday's workout, so today is our stretch day. Uh, we need to work, stretch out those sore muscles to try to loosen them up a little bit, all right? So we're gonna do some upper body and lower body. All right, so the first one is, is every stretch we do is held for 30 seconds, and if we're doing like two arms, then you're gonna hold it for 15, 15 per arm for a total of 30, all right? So the first one we're gonna do is grab the elbow and you're gonna pull it back, all right? And we're gonna hold this side for 15 seconds and then we'll switch. Make sure every stretch is a slight pull or a slight pain, I guess you sh could say, but nothing should be too excruciating. Switch. All right, shake it out. Stretch, we're gonna go stretch our shoulders, watch our shoulder muscles are called our deltoids. Okay? You take your right arm, put it across your body. Let's get, get a nice little pressure on it, not too much. Get a good stretch. Hold it. And switch to the left arm. Pressure there, stretch out that deltoid. And release. Good. All right, next one is two arms up. Stretch to the sky. This is my favorite. We're gonna hold this one for 30 seconds. I like to add a little lean because after sitting all day on the computer, my back hurts. Keep pushing your hands up to the ceiling. All right, shake it out. Good, now set our legs. Okay, let's just get a little left foot in front of you, right foot behind, just give it a little slight lean. Okay, let's switch. Right now we're stretching out our groin and our Achilles. We're gonna go back up to our upper body and we're gonna grab our two hands and we're gonna kind of just pull them out away from your body, stretching out your chest, especially if you're doing a lot of push ups. Back to our lower body. Okay, back to our legs. Okay, it's just the knee pull. Okay, balance is going to be tough, right? Just make sure if you get off balance, just put your foot down and reset yourself. Keep your right foot flat, and you're just going to pull your left knee in. And switch. Okay, let's go right knee up. 
<laughs> Good for your balance too. Yep, which I need to work on. That's why I cut the first one up short. <laughs> and now. All right, so if you can find a wall in your room or somewhere like wherever in your workspace, um, we're gonna virtually show this to you. So you're going to put your hands against the wall and you're gonna put, this is a calf stretch, all right? Or you can put your hands together like we are, but I, like kind of like Mr. Jameen, all right? And then the pressure goes down into your heel. But it's easier if you could use a wall. Okay, switch. Same thing. Pressure down into your heel. All right, good. Okay. Get down the floor. What we're going to do is just gonna start stretching our lower back and our hamstrings. So we're just going to bring our knees in to our chest. All right? And hold it for 30 seconds. Now, I almost fell asleep there. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a stomach stretch. We did this one on Tuesday, but we're gonna do it again because it feels good. All right, on your elbows, or if you need a little bit more, you can push up a little bit, but make sure your head is up, your chin's up, and really kind of stretch your core, your center, and keep your hips on the floor. All right. Okay. Next, we're gonna stretch our lower back again and our lats. Our lats are the side of your back, okay? This can go two hands or one hand. Okay, what you do is you put two hands out, just lean back, put your head down. Sorry, this one kills my knees. We have one more hamstring stretch. Okay, you're gonna this time you're going to lift your heel up, all right, and you're gonna put more pressure here, and you're gonna put your hands on the leg right above the knee of the leg that the heel is lifted or your toe is lifted. Switch. Same thing. Get your, raise your toe up. All right. All right, so we hope you enjoyed your stretching and really continue to work on your own, um, some stretches, especially if you're really feeling sore. We're also asking you guys to help us out with something. In order to kind of up our workout game, we're asking you if you could save some water bottles, uh, Powerade bottles, um, coffee cans, anything that you can put water in or sand or rocks to put a little bit of weight or resistance into what, oh, <laughs> into what you're doing. Maybe I need to hold it. See. All right. Um, so if you could start saving this, we'll start adding these into some of our workouts and we'll let you know ahead of time before we get started um, if you're gonna use these or not. All right, but this will be a nice way to add a little bit of weight and build a little bit of muscle tone. Got anything? Okay, nice job. Tomorrow, we got a good one for you tomorrow, so we're gonna get you, get you into the weekend in a nice, nice big workout. Yep, Make awesome sure job, up. guys.
Thanks for joining us for another episode of Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.